Venice, Venice and half a day. I'm so happy to see you all here and, and thank you really from the bottom of my heart for coming this morning. Uh, we have a very special presentation today for um, the Guam War Survivors Foundation, Memorial Foundation, uh, for the work that they have done and, uh, and also in commemoration of Guam War Survivors Day. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of um, my colleague, Senator Virgin Bisco uh, Biscotti. Oh, please come join me. And uh, the legislative staff is here. We are also streaming this on Facebook Live, so uh, you will be there uh, while you're in the museum. And uh, I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Johnny Sablon. Of Tomorrow Fairs, and of course, our very beloved and renowned um, musician, and uh, Miss Monica Okada and Clifford Guzman from the Galaini Group, who are running our museum right now. Thank you. And you have graciously welcomed us here. I also like to recognize uh, Jackie Babas from Kaha, and the other members of uh, Kaha who are here, and um, the members of the Guam Museum Memorial Foundation, who we will be uh, presenting a resolution to in just a very little while. I would also like to most especially recognize the war survivors who are here with us today, and I would like you to either stand or raise your hand because we are here to honor you and we want to recognize you. that exceeds imaginable feats of resilience, courage, and strength. The occupation of Guam by enemy forces from December 8, 1941 to August 10, 1944 was one of the most tragic and horrific events in our island's history. The atrocities inflicted upon the people of Guam have left scars that will never heal. The people of Guam, some of them and their families are in this room, with us today, they were subjected to death, rape, severe personal injury, personal injury, forced labor, forced march, internment, and, and many other atrocities. These acts resulted in the deaths of over 1,000 people during the war. During the occupation for the remainder of the war and in the rebuilding after the war, villages were destroyed Many families were separated and suffered the loss of property and livelihood. In the end, the peaceful life that the people of Guam had and had cherished before the war was lost forever. Thank you for coming. Please, there are more seats in the front. Mm -hmm. Our war survivors have rebuilt our villages and our island and forged from the darkness, fear, ashes, and rubble indestructible pillars of strength, courage, perseverance, and resilience, and a new life for generations to come. And we are forever grateful to you for that. Thank you again. Two years ago, the Guam Legislature enacted Public Law 33-56, declaring that June 28th of every year would be recognized as War Survivors Remembrance Day to honor war survivors who have gone before us to celebrate the lives of those war survivors who are with us and to remind all future generations that they must never forget the greatest generation that ever was. June 28 is the day that marks President Harry Truman's transmittal request to the U.S. House of Representatives that the Navy Department pay claims for death or personal injury to residents on Guam through the war. The U.S. Senate report accompanying the Meritorious Claims Act of 1945 stated, quote, in the future this island will become one of the most important United States naval and air bases in the Pacific. Its people have been loyal towards the United States. The committee believes that the enactment of this bill is just and warranted 
that it would be helpful in retaining the goodwill of these people in the future, and that it will be a sound investment in our future society. Under the Meritorious Claims Act of 1945, only 6,600 claims were filed by the surviving population of about 21,000. It did not account for the individuals on Guam during the occupation, almost all of them were subjected to humiliation, beatings, and loss of property. So despite President Truman's request and that Meritorious Claims Act, the various bills introduced by our delegates and the laws passed that attempted to attain justice for the people of Guam, the War Claims Revision, I mean the War Claims Review Commission in 2004 reported that the U.S. still had a moral obligation to recognize the suffering and the loyalty of the people of Guam and that further parity and compensation should be afforded eligible survivors. The War Claims Review Commission had an extensive report in 2004 and just to commemorate the very seriousness of this occasion and, and the special of this occasion, I would like to just read a couple excerpts from this report. It is, they list in very much detail the atrocities that the witnesses had, had related to them. And they say, it is also worth mentioning that many witnesses testified that Japanese soldiers evicted them from their homes, took all their food and livestock. Many of the witnesses testified that, that in the last year of Japanese occupation, they were forced to march great distances to three different concentration camps with little or no time to collect provisions, resulting in many of the elderly dying along the way or shortly after arriving at the camps. They also testified that conditions at the camps were horrendous. There was little or no shelter. Most of the people had only foliage over their heads to deflect the torrential rains. They had no food and no water. Some were near a small river, but that river was very polluted with human waste. Witnesses were also testified that all able-bodied Chamorros were forced to work on different projects, military construction such as airstrips or coastal defensive positions. Others had to work on farms or rice paddies. Some had to work on multiple farms, traveling great distances and, and hills during the day. They were forced to do it every day whether they were healthy or not. If they were unable because they were sick, they were beaten and threatened with death. Many of the witnesses testify they were beaten for being suspected of hiding George Tweed, a U.S. Navy radio man. Several families took, in fact, did courageously help hide Tweed and took turns hiding and feeding the Navy radio man. Several witnesses testified that they saw their fellow Gomanians stabbed by the Japanese with their bayonets. It was clear to the Review Commission that during the Japanese occupation of Guam, the local inhabitants were treated in the most brutal, cruel, and despicable manner. Many of the survivors testified that they continued to endure the psychological effects of the war. The Review Commission is not aware of any comparable situation other than on Guam, where virtually the entire population was either interned, in hiding to avoid capture, or subjected to forced march at one time or another while under Japanese occupation. In fact, it could well be argued that the restrictions and control placed on the residents of Guam were tantamount to civilian internment of the entire population. The Review Commission finds that there was lack of parity for the residents of Guam under the Guam Act as compared to other War Claims Acts because the latter covered only claims of persons who were United States citizens during World War II and did not cover loyal Romanians who had the status of U.S. nationals at that time. Although residents of Guam were later granted U.S. citizenship under the 1950 Organic Act, the grant was not retroactive. The Review Commission finds that the U.S. Navy put forth vigorous, good-faith efforts to address the war damage and loss claims the resident of the residents of Guam, but that this was hampered by the lack of modern communication media, by the ongoing buildup of forces on the island in preparation for the Allied assault on Japan, by the frequent turnover of Navy personnel as evidenced by the fact that before 1950, a total of seven land and claims commissions were successively, successively appointed. 
and by the fact that at the same time the Navy was dealing with the claims, it was also responsible for conducting a large-scale land acquisition program on the island, under which the U.S. government eventually came to occupy nearly three-fourths of the island. The Review Commission finds that the Japanese occupation of Guam was particularly cruel, oppressive, and brutal, and that the loyalty and steadfastness shown by the people of Guam in the face of the atrocities and barbarism inflicted on them by their Japanese occupiers was all the more extraordinary in the circumstances in which they were forced to live. The Review Commission affirms that there is a moral obligation on the part of our national government to pay compensation for war damages in order to ensure, to the extent possible, that no single individual or group of individuals bears more than a just part of the overall burden of war. Coincidentally, just yesterday, uh, June 21, began the one-year application period for survivors to file claims under the Guam World War II Loyalty Recognition Act that was passed in 2016. Notwithstanding the controversial source of, of this funding, uh, my office and I'm sure my colleagues at the legislature offices stand ready to assist in any way we can with, with filing of claims by any survivors. I want to, again, acknowledge the survivors for, for being really in so many ways the reason that we are here today. I would also at this time call the foundation members, Monica Guzman, Brenda Sana, Joey Frankes, and Mary Princess Ferrin, if you could please join me up here. We all know that in the decades that followed after the war, the island continues to make many steps to heal from the wounds and the scars that we war left behind. Instrumental to this recovery process, is the work of the Guam War Survivors Memorial Foundation, an organization that has been dedicated to honoring those who suffered and survived the occupation, addressing the traumas inherited by their families. In so doing, the foundation has not only passed on an important aspect of our cultural storytelling so that our present and future generations may always remember these stories, they've also assisted in healing of our war survivors, their families, and our community by hosting a website dedicated to allowing war survivors to have an outlet to share their hardships. And organizing a memorial mass that is celebrated every year on December 8th at the Dulcinombre de Maria Cathedral Basilica. Sponsoring a concert series dedicated to the survivors of World War II featuring the music from that era. We have some of our musicians right up here. Creating a memorial wall with the names of 15,891 war victims and survivors advocating for war reparations, and publishing three books that commemorate the lives of our war survivors and their families. The first book, Real Faces, Guam's World War II Survivors, stemmed from the weekly series in the Marianas Variety newspaper called Real People, Real Stories, which published some of the testimonies from the 90 who were chosen out of 8,000 surveyed by the Congressional League Panel Guam War Claims Review Commission to relive their compelling stories in person before the commission in December of 2003. Real People, Real Stories was created by Senator Frank Ross Jr., president of the Guam War Survivors Memorial Foundation, his senatorial staff, their friends from Expression Studio, and Mr. Robert Tenora is here with us today, and local companies who wanted to help to educate the community about the experiences of the Chamorros, to remind the U.S. government of its obligations, and to those who survived the war and to the heirs of those that were killed during the war. The second book, Families in the Face of Survival, focuses on family, food, and faith, and captures the critical bonds that strengthened our people and ensured their survivorship. The third book, released just last week, Congratulations, 
uh, Legacy Beyond Faces, A Sentimental Journey, Generation to Generation. That book describes how music uplifted our people, proving hope and allowing them to express resistance in the darkest times. This music continues to unite generations and further empower the stories of our people. So I would like at this time for uh, Senator Lee to help me in presenting the legislative resolution. Senator Frank Blas Jr. is off island at the moment, so uh, accepting on his behalf will be uh, Vice President Monica Guzman, uh, Secretaries Victoria Lola Leon Guerrero, Treasurer Maria Princess Fairman, and Directors Jane Castro, Luis Athletic, and Brenda Sana and Joey Frankis. On behalf of all of us present in this room and on behalf of the people of Guam, thank you for the work you do.
para tanga si guru ti man maleta ya si juru semua masih todo ni di eksperiensia jani historia minzu bunga mamora kontinua mona mana tumo jama umu kesti esti mamana paguna programa ni para ena ujung ni man menciona ke ni bayu fino ini si programa ta para bayu eksperiensia na yuna kosa ki baha ke ni ti komo prendi the uh, upcoming event that we're going to be celebrating this year for the uh, War Survivors Memorial Remembrance Day uh, is a very significant part of our mission and our journey to bring recognition back to the war survivors whom we are honoring that day. And our mission and our goal has been and will always be to honor the survivors. The music is just one aspect of this performance that brings us together not only as musicians, but as family. And we found that our first experience back in 2016, on June 28th, created this family. And that is what this whole purpose is for, is to honor you. Our legacy as musicians came from our parents, and that they instilled something really special to us. And that the importance of music in our lives allowed us to share that story with you and bring back some of those memories when you were happy. And that is the goal here, is that we're going to bring that joy and happiness back again. Because music is, in, is, is so embedded in each and every one of us. And we carry that through in memories that, that we recall from times past. And we want to just say thank you very much to uh, my co-director, Ms. Brenda Sana, who has been instrumental in every aspect in, in, in preparing for this upcoming uh, event where we are going to honor our survivors. So we want to just say thank you, Situ Smaasi. And the June 28th War Remembrance Day is being proclaimed here for all of the survivors and the people here on Guam. And June 28th this year will be at the Sheraton Hotel. Uh, and we will continue to, uh, I have to say it's a sellout crowd and it has been from the very first performance. And uh, we're very blessed to have such support in, in honoring our survivors. So just know that we're very, very happy that you all came today and that you're, sh you're sharing this room here with us. It's even a greater honor in, in sharing your stories. is an exhibition in partnership uh, with the Department of Tomorrow Affairs and the Guam War Survivors Memorial Foundation. Uh, many, many months ago, President Johnny Saban um, uh, wanted to have an exhibition here, and so in discussion and in partnership with the foundation, we were able to put this together. Um, so this will be up through August 20th, and then uh, from August 20th, then there will be a, a new exhibition. But please uh, uh, invite your family and friends to come up or to come down and enjoy the exhibition. The museum is open every day except Mondays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you. Get a picture together, and then uh, just one more announcement is on July 2nd, the Manengun Memorial Service will take place at Manengun. Uh, I think that's at 2 p.m. So, and that's being uh, headed by Senator Jean Lee's office and uh, many, many, and the foundation. They also have a foundation. So, let's see you there. Thank you again.